Hello everybody, my name is Sylvain Rochon. I love to get people to expand their human experience using cutting edge technology and this is the purpose of this video again this week. Um, today I'm pretty excited because uh, I love to talk about the human brain and uh, because this amazing organ is allowing us to think, to remember, to be aware, um, you know, to, to, to process information, emotions. I mean, we, we really take it for granted. We don't know. We don't even understand fully how it works. We can uh, uh, look at it and see how it fires, things like that. Uh, but it's extremely complex. And uh, it's an amazing thing because we use it constantly. Uh, in fact, our whole body is basically subservient to the brain. We, <laughs> we, we use our senses... You know, touch, uh, seeing, uh, tasting, uh, smelling, and, the, and hearing, all these, these senses. Um, and we see them as part of the body, but really what, what we perceive essentially is processed by the brain. It's all, the, the brain actually does a lot of the work. It's, it's like um, we ha I'm using a microphone now and earbuds. My microphone is the outside uh, mechanism for, to capture my voice. But the re the processing and what actually makes it a voice makes it something that we can perceive is actually the CPU, the computer that doesn't. So the brain is the same way, uh, and the whole body, like the digestive system, is is to feed the brain, is to feed all these these uh, these elements. So it's a really important part, and we are aware of ourselves and we have a consciousness, and this is this is because of how how the brain is wired uh, and how it fires together. Now, uh, scientists have been looking at the brain for a long, long, long time. And the reason why we don't really understand the brain as much as we should is because it's, it, it, there are so many parts of it. It's <laughs> literally, we have 100, 100 billion neurons in the human brain. Each neuron has, on average, about 1,000 co connections with neighboring Neurons. So if you if you look at the amount of connections, we have 100 trillion connections, and this is just a it's a massive organ, and cells are tiny, tiny, and all these these synapses and uh, and axons and the li these little t dendrils that are floating about. Uh, I'm showing an image here so you can understand better. Uh, I mean, these are these are really really small. So in order to map to know how things are connected is extremely difficult because of the size of it. I mean, there's so many, 100 trillion connections and synapses that we need to map. It's like the wires on microchips, right? And uh, we have to map them out. And, and it's super tiny. So we have electronic teles uh, telescope, electronic microscopes that are able to take pictures in 3D. That's great. But then we have, all, we, we have to analyze the pictures in our, and, and actually physically map it and there's a hundred trillion connections of these tiny things. Uh, so there's big problem to really be able to map it out. And once we have it mapped or we have a technique to map it, then we can really uh, like l probably look at uh, how, how it all fires, how it's all interconnected. And then we can figure out well, how this, uh, this machine actually works. It's a little bit like trying to figure out how a computer works without the ability to tr retracing you know, the different connections inside the, the transistors and, and how they're, they're connected to each other. It's a big problem. We just, it's like magic. <laughs> if you can't do that, well, the brain is, it, it works. We know it works because we are here and it, we, we do things, but we, we can't really map it properly. Now, the time it would take using current methods and the most advanced microscope, uh, it, it would take us about 50,000 years to map the human brain using current methods and the most advanced technology. Now, we did, and this is a group at the Max Planck Institute of Neuro, uh, Neurobiology, they, they figured out using artificial intelligence to uh, take the pictures of, of, of the telescopes and process and map it using AI, that would accelerate it by orders of magnitude, like huge amounts, because now it's all done manually. People are looking at 3D pictures and mapping it out. They have a bunch of interns <laughs> kind of kind of drawing it out. It takes a huge amount of time, but put in the computer and the AI in there, and they're, they've, able to, to, they've been able to test it. 
it, very very high real reliability to map it then just you take uh, you have a machine that takes the pictures and you have ai that maps out so mapping the human brain is actually not that far off because of that very very new tech once we have it mapped Huge amounts of possibilities are open to it because then we can understand how we work, how actually how this thing works. And that allows us to actually create an artificial brain because once again, we're able to create components like synapses that are just that work in a similar fashion to our synapses. I'm putting the links below as well as using DNA memory, using atomic memory, using different components uh, that the brain uses to, ma to make uh, to make uh, to make something very very efficient, uh, and uh, both in energy and also you know processing power um, wise. Um, so in our in our fairly near future, we can we can probably build an artificial brain that is not only as powerful as ours, but also in a similar size. Because I've I told you, according to Moore's law, and just our progress uh, scientifically, um, you know by 2029 ish about 10 years from now uh, we'll have computers that are that have as many computations a second as our human brain but those computers are highly are, are much less energy efficient and they're much bigger like in size than a human brain I mean that's it's, it's a comparison right uh, and they can't achieve even though they are they have the same amount of computations a second they're not as uh, as good as a human brain in many ways but we're we're getting uh, into uh, research and components of mimicking actually by uh, the, the biology where we're looking at biology as uh, as good examples um, in order to make uh, to make uh, something that is smaller, more efficient, um, that has uh, a lot of the sim the, the same um, uh, particularities as a human brain that make that makes it so great and. And if we're able to do that, and if indeed uh, the way the brain is wired is what allows for consciousness, then we're able that whatever human artificial brain we're going to create uh, with extensions that with senses, so that you know there's an awareness with, uh, for the environment, will likely also be conscious. So that's a, and that's a philosophical uh, question I've I've uh, had in some of my videos as well. Uh, but this is not for tomorrow. This is probably. I estimate we're going to have the first artificial brain in about 20 years, uh, but we'll have the computing power of the human brain in about 10, the singularity event. Uh, so these are pretty close to home and pretty pretty near. In the meantime, uh, we have hyper-intelligent AI and hyper-intelligent computers coming out that, we, uh, that can serve us as humanity and uh, also accelerate the learning and the creation of these, uh, these more uh, super exciting uh, computers and, uh, and, and artificial synapses and brains and all this stuff. Anyway, the links are below. Uh, please uh, follow me if you want. If you're interested in more videos like this that explain certain stuff and that that also projects into the future, subscribe to my channel. No problem. Share as you will, and uh, I'll have some more exciting stuff to talk about next week. Enjoy uh, this Easter Sunday. I'm, I'll be actually posting it tomorrow because nobody's really going to use YouTube today. I figure, uh, and uh, well. Have a good time. Don't eat too much chocolate. Don't drink too much. Help us all. Ciao.